Hi everyone, this is Peter here. Today I'm going to show you some stills and footage that I captured of a very tiny springtail nymph that at first glimpse looked like a tardigrade. I was actually planning to shoot tardigrades and I was so stoked when I saw that I might have found a different species to the one that I captured a few weeks back. But then I realized that tardigrades don't have antennae and later on I confirmed that it was in fact a springtail. I spotted it in a sample of moss that I had collected in our garden. I filled the sample up with a bit of water and let it settle for about half an hour which makes it much easier to capture these subjects. Before the compilation of images and footage I'd like to show you a bit of a behind the scenes clip just to explain what kind of setup I used to capture this very tiny organism which would have been no longer than 0.2 millimeter. This is essentially the very same setup that I put to work when I captured the tardigrades as well with the exception of the camera body. By the way if you'd like to learn about tardigrades you should definitely check out this educational video of mine. I captured some amazing footage of several specimens. I will leave a link in the description and you will also be able to click on it at the end of this video. I'll also provide you with a few tips in regard to my setup and settings so you can give it a go yourself. It can be so satisfying to capture these tiny little creatures especially for the very first time. So the camera that I used for this shoot was the ATD that can only shoot in full HD but somewhat makes up for the lack of high resolution with its crop vector of 1.6x. I used my small B3 Manfrotto tripod which is sturdy enough to support this smaller body. I had to extend the center column a bit to be able to place the sample right beneath the fully extended lens barrel of my Laova 25mm ultra macro lens. I was shooting at the maximum magnification of 5x and was experimenting with different apertures between f4 and f8. F8 gives you more depth of field but also the diffraction at this magnification ratio starts to kick in so you need to take that into consideration. Remember the effective aperture is the magnification plus one multiplied by the aperture so in this case it's f48 that is why I had a very strong LED light the bowling p1 placed super close to the sample for properly illuminating the subject. I was only shooting at 24 frames per second but didn't double the shutter speed because I wanted to use the lowest ISO possible. Also when you handle your sample be very careful as even the slightest movement can cause the subject to get out of the frame and the focus which is hard enough to achieve can be affected as well. I spent several minutes trying to nail the focus at this extremely shallow depth of field by adjusting the height of the center column. I also recommend you use a small petri dish so it's easier to track your subject and placing it on a dark background for a higher contrast ratio is recommended as well. For the images I'll be showing you the exposure settings but also wanted to point out that I decided to stick with the constant light source in this instance because it would have been quite difficult to avoid specular highlights but I might attempt to shoot differently next time. I also use the remote shutter release to minimize motion blur. Anyway let's roll the footage and then we have a look at the images as well.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn both about tardigrades and springtails, you should definitely check out these two videos. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content and see you all very soon in the next one.